How's your golf game? Hey guys, a different video here for you. I know I don't talk about video games too much, mainly because I don't have a capture device that can properly convey, like, most proper video game channels, and I've had some history of game design. I went to school for it. I used to write about uh, video games for my university newspaper. But I'm going to try my best here, because I do believe I have a significantly kind of unique view on Last of Us 2. I can understand the rage to an extent that people are having for the game, but at the same time, I also can understand the excellence that is being praised upon this game. However, I feel that it's more of a middle ground in terms of both factors. I believe that the rage for this game, for a certain aspect, if you don't know about it yet, is entirely overplayed. I have a feeling that some people just weren't expecting this, and this thing that it's talked about is kind of interesting to me because I thought that this was alluded to in the original teaser, and a lot of people had the same sort of thought process about it, so when that thing happens and people are all mad about it, I'm kind of surprised because we all thought this was going to happen a while back. I think that they're upset in the matter of how it happens. It's a risky move. It's kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket and hoping that it will be approved by most. And it's not. It's definitely a divisive sort of aspect, but that's what I thought at first was a great storytelling arc. I thought this was a great idea. However, the game doesn't take the full advantage of it in terms of its narrative. But first, let's talk about the gameplay. It's not as improved as I thought it would be. In total, there's really only one new villain or new enemy type for the infected, which is the Shambler, and then for the humans, there's a dog. Sure, things are tweaked, things are improved, but if essentially, instead of it being Last of Us 2, it's Last of Us 1.5, in my opinion, in terms of the gameplay improvement. It's still got a cool, fun edge to it, and the fact that there is so much customization in terms of the optics of how the game works. You can vary how good the enemies are, you can vary how much stealth is needed, you can vary how much damage you take, and you can flip it all through. At first there's the difficulty options, and then you go into accessibility and controls, and all of this is added. You can add a slow-mo thing for some reason, but there's so much optimization in terms of how you can tune the game to your experience. I know Skill Up talked about it for a couple of minutes in his, and he's not kidding when he says that this is some of the best difficulty optimization he's ever seen. And admittedly for me as well, it's not just simply, hey, hardcore, insanity, whatever. You can go really deep into this. I spent about 15 minutes when I started my new game plus just seeing where it would go with that. But again, in terms of the gameplay, it is good, but because of how long the game is, the game takes about 22, 25 hours to beat. I felt that about halfway through, both in terms of gameplay and story-wise, the game just comes to a grinding halt and it takes a lot for you to get reinvested in it. Admittedly, when this halfway marker happens, not a kick to the balls, but more so it took the wind out of my sails. I was like, what? I'm going all the way back? It's a massive pacing issue. In my opinion, they really should have done this linear in terms of that there is this secondary character, Abby, and you should have gone back and forth with this character. And there's a reason why the embargo was about the first 12 hours, because by the time you hit the 12 hour mark, that's when you switch over to Abby. And my God, it just, it, it happens at the worst time. You could have been building up to this. You could have built up to this by switching back and forth between the characters constantly. The obvious method of this game is that we're showing that revenge does not grant everything. It's a literal eye for an eye makes the world blind story. And it starts off decently enough, but the problem is the game just drags it out too far and it's kind of nailing you on the head. It's not as obvious in your face about it as certain films might be, like Mother. Mother was so bloody obvious with its symbolism that it was infuriating. Whereas Last of Us 2, it's not on that level, but you can see Druckmann's really trying to weave his own story of misery and torture. He's trying to make his own version of the road in sense of a depressing story that doesn't really have a happy ending, but he doesn't really nail it because the game has two endings. I first I thought, okay, this is it. This is the end of the game. This is where it ends. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, no. Boop, they throw this e extra level. It's like it could have been a DLC or it could have been something, but I, I feel that they tack this part on and it's a tack on because it's not built out enough. But at this point, you're already going into the 20 hour mark in terms of a single player story, which by the way, very awesome to see so much 
care and dedication put into a single player game. This doesn't have any multiplayer. The first one did, which I heard wasn't that great. It was just kind of tacked on. Everything, every single aspect of the development was put into the single player, which is great. And you want to make something worth your while, which I kind of gauge on cost to hours in terms of that for every dollar that you spent, you should be able to get, I don't know, a half hour or an hour out of it. And considering I got 25 hours out of a $10 rental, I'm definitely happy with it. If there are some people who would be willing to replay this game, sure. However, the opening five hours, which the mm thing happens in it, it's a massively long tutorial and it is so arduous to get through it. It's what some people complain about with Red Dead 2's uh, snow mission, which I can kind of see the similarities to. However, I really enjoy the snow missions. There's a lot of fun in them, especially when you take on the Driscoll gang. Last of Us 2 doesn't really have a fun mission. And considering it really relies on the narrative to keep you invested, once you've seen these aspects, I don't know about you, but in most times I can't play a game through again unless there's some sort of niche or edge that can really hook you back in. For example, Halo Reach. I loved playing through that story multiple times because I like to see what the cinematics were with variant armor. Different looks, different armor variations, and the story was fun. There was a lot of fun missions in it. Mass Effect 2, you can make all your different choices. There's always a different aspect of the game that you haven't uncovered yet. You can always go through this, the game do a lot of the things you've already done, but you can always find a different conversation, a different outcome. Last of Us 2, it doesn't give you that. It doesn't have the ability for you to choose anything. Sure, if you play New Game Plus, you can see your characters with your upgraded guns and whatnot, but in the first one, you could use points or whatever it was to have your characters be wearing different clothing, different backpacks. They don't give you that in this game, which is a bit unfortunate, because I would have liked to see you play the game in kind of silly outfits, maybe, if you wanted. But you don't. You have to play through the game as it is, and the only variation is the gun. I don't entirely see it as a replayable game. I tried, and I got about as far as just before getting into Seattle, and I couldn't do it. I just was bummed out. I was burnt out. Admittedly, I have been playing a lot of video games for the last few days. I just got 200,000 points on my Xbox, which... Woo, achievement of nothing. But talking about something that I think we can all agree on that was absolutely fantastically well done in Last of Us 2 is the visuals. This is the most beautiful looking game I've ever seen. I'm not akin to Naughty Dog or any sort of PlayStation game really, which, woo for me, my roommates own the PS4, I own the Xbox. But seeing the gameplay and the cinematics be one thing, like it just seamlessly goes back and forth. There's no cut to black and you can obviously see the engine degrade. It's all one. There's a reason why this game is 150 gigs on your system. It's absolutely gorgeous. The amount of painstaking effort that was put into these environments, into these characters, into the lighting, the shading, everything is absolutely top-notch. The game, in terms of a f out of 10 scale, gets a 5 alone just for the visual. So people who are just review bombing this game on Metacritic with zeros, like, honestly guys, you can go fuck yourself. You're absolutely trashing the effort that was put in by these artists and these developers. Yeah, you can have your problem with Druckmann, whatever. You can have your problems with the story, but don't fucking shit on the artist. You know how much hours they put into? You know the crunch garbage that they put into? Crunch is horrible. I hate crunch. I hate the idea of it. It's not a worthy business tactic, but it's done and it's put into the world because of how quickly we consume media. But you can't review bomb. You can't give this game a zero. I wouldn't care if you even gave it a two. You can't give it a zero for the visuals alone. There's just too much goddamn effort that's been put into it. And then kind of going back to the gameplay, the variations in terms of the combat doesn't really change that much. You find yourself in very few unique situations. And funnily enough, all of those unique situations are with Abby. Abby has the best levels or the best combat encounters. Ellie does have one, which is where she's being hunted by the wolves and then she comes into an area where there's infected and the wolves and you kind of can throw stuff and make the two factions fight each other. Abby has similar situations, but she also has a level. She has a part where she goes into a hospital and it's straight out of Resident Evil in terms of how much it scared the shit out of me. But it wasn't as unique as a Resident Evil level because there's just not too much in terms of difficulty in terms of how you defeat the enemies in this area. It's just shoot them a lot and they'll die. Whereas I would say the most challenging and the most unique 
encounter you have with Abby is at one point where you're fighting the sniper. And at first you're like, okay, just dodge the bullets. But then the sniper starts to get infected to come at you and the infected start to increase in difficulty and variancy. All the while you're trying to avoid being shot. This was the most difficult part of the game in my opinion. I felt that this part just pissed me off but I wanted to keep going, I wanted to get past it. But I feel that this part was by far the best level in the game. But then it just keeps going. And in a nutshell, that's the biggest problem with Last of Us 2. It just goes a little bit too long. The first one was perfect because it was precise. It didn't have many enemy variants, but those enemy variants were perfect. They were exactly fine-tuned. The game was very linear, but it was a very focused linear. It was a very focused narrative. Last of Us 2 tries to have that, but it also tries to have a bit of openness. It has a bit of more of an establishing story to it. It tries to reach for too much. It's still a pretty damn good game. It's a very, very impressive product. Story issue aside, it's one of the most impressive games I've ever seen made. It doesn't excuse the story issues. My biggest issues with this game is the pacing and the lacking intuitiveness with the gameplay improvement. The first game came out seven years ago. Things have just been tuned. You could have some arguments saying that Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3's gameplay barely improved. But those two games were, what, like three years apart? Look at the differences between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. Last of Us 2 doesn't have as much of one. It's just more so fine-tuned. I just thought there would be more from that. So in the end, I would say I would give this game a 5 out of 7. I thought it was well made. I think it's a good game. It just reaches a little bit too far in my opinion. I couldn't play this again. It's trying too hard to be dark, but I've done a bunch of really screwed up shit in Red Dead 1 and Red Dead 2, so it didn't bother me too much, but I can see why it might bother some people. And now I'm gonna talk about the spoiler part. I don't know how y'all are mad that Joel dies. Yeah, maybe you might be upset about how he dies, which is exactly the point of the narrative, and that's why it's trying to make you feel even more invested, which you already were. And the whole game is obviously talking about revenge is bad, blah, 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 which is kind of corny when you see the final ending. I wasn't surprised that he was going to die. As I said at the beginning of this video, when the teaser was released, people were already speculating that he was going to die. It was a very, very big rumor. So I don't understand why people were upset that he did die. Like some people literally cut the game up after Joel died. That's the point though. It makes you mad it makes you feel something. That's what you want from a narrative. You want to feel anger. And then, yeah, it's a bit weird that you jump into Abby's shoes, but we find out why she wanted to kill Joel. She was full on right to kill Joel. Joel, he's not the saint that y'all think he is. At the very beginning of the game, he literally tells Tommy that he sacrificed the, a cure for the human race, a means of saving the world for Ellie so he could be a dad again. And there are some arguments that maybe humanity didn't deserve to be saved anymore considering how fucked up the world is. And that's why the first game ended so well. That massive ambiguity, that's what made the ending so good. And that's why I kind of feel Last of Us 2 shouldn't have been made in the first place. You always like those endings, that are those open-ended endings. And Last of Us 2 tries almost to have it, but it's just a depressing like, oh, okay. I don't know where on earth they're gonna go with the sequel. Aside from that, visuals are great, gameplay's okay, could have been more improved. Acting by everyone is phenomenal. Sure, there are some characters that are in this that die that you don't give an absolute crap about. The only people who I cared about in terms of the story were these two uh, kids that you meet that are from this uh, Scars tribe. And then Owen. Owen kind of grew on me at the end, but I feel that there's a lot of side characters in this that you don't care about as much. My main comparison was, can I get as much of a <gasps> out of their deaths as I would have from Red Dead 2? And every single character in the gang that died in that game was like, <gasps> didn't feel that for more than like 70% of the deaths in this game, and especially when they were predictable. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. I, this is a very long-winded video, I admit, but I'm actually gonna be doing an even longer-winded video. If you guys remember James, this was a friend of mine who we did a long talk about the long night and kind of how this was the worst strategy of all time video. We're gonna be doing another video once he finishes the game. I'm hoping he doesn't watch this video because I don't want to spoil it for him, but we're gonna do a long, long talk. So I hope you guys look forward to that because I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.